for development mm -hmm. is I like the big problem files. Mm -hmm. I like to do the 203Ks okay. with the contractors and mm -hmm. the, the consultants and getting the listing agent on the phone and talking about deadlines and... Brutal. I was there like watching on the side the whole process Yeah. and I, it, was, it was a great joy to see that you helped them through the whole process. And uh, I'm glad that we have people like you that are serving the community. People just think of mortgages like you go into a bank and you don't even know why you're put into the loan that you're put into. And before you know it, you're spending forty to seventy thousand dollars on your, you know, on your on your home transaction, and you don't know if am I getting a good deal? Am I not? Was there something that could have been done differently? So there's a lot to it. Hi everybody, this is John Luca, and today is another blessed day, guys, and. Uh, I just wanted to really uh, bring a special guest that is here with me, somebody that actually uh, I see him so active as a lender, somebody I feel like can answer so many questions. I've actually got a chance to work with you. Uh, a little bit when, I, when my pastor was buying his FHA uh, property, so yeah. he is here to answer a lot of questions about um, a lot of questions that people have brought my way, especially uh, for people that want to get into investing and they want to use an FHA loan. But before we get there, guys, make sure you actually, uh, if you're here for the first time, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure that you follow me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok. And uh, if you have any questions, also don't forget to leave a comment. All right. So I am here with Jake. Jake, welcome uh, once again. It's a pleasure having you here. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you became a broker, your, a little bit of, of your background as well. Yeah, uh, so again, my name is Jake McLaughlin. I work with uh, CMG Mortgage. Mm -hmm. So they're a, uh, they're a national company. I focus most of my business locally. Mm -hmm. uh, my office is based in South Portland. But I'm licensed in Maine and New Hampshire, and I'm mm -hmm. looking to get licensed in uh, Florida and Texas. Yeah. Um, and how did I get into this business? I mean, it's funny because um, I've always thought about like trying to buy um, an apartment building mm -hmm. like since I was 16, 17. Mm -hmm. I think that it was just because those were like the easier investments to like understand. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about stock, um, I feel like the stock market as a, as a whole is just there's so much to think about. Um, and not having the control of the stock going up and down was kind mm -hmm. of something that I didn't understand. And you don't really like to put money into something you don't understand. At least that's like my take on it. Mm -hmm. um, for real estate, though, it was something that was tangible. It was something that I could control. You know, like I can if, if I want to add value to my property, well, then I save a little bit and mm -hmm. I find the right guys to, to rehab it. And uh, maybe I at, put out a patio or maybe mm -hmm. I, you know, redo the roof mm -hmm. or... Um, remodel the kitchen or something like that yeah um, so there was more control in that and uh, also I really liked the idea of just passive income mm -hmm. uh, for a property that I could also live in yeah so I always had an interest in real estate and um, long story short my sister uh, she ended up uh, marrying somebody that was uh, kind of 10 years ahead of me mm -hmm. and you now the guy is already yeah he's, yeah, he's well seasoned and mm -hmm. um, now he does a lot of different things. He wears a lot of different hats, uh, mostly just like project management. And um, he has a few buddies that he works with and they all just kind of pool their money together. And mm -hmm. when they want to take on a new business venture, then they take it on. And mm -hmm. it's different every year. And he has a very flexible life. Mm -hmm. And uh, guy's 36 now. And I look at him and I'm like, that's a pretty nice life. Yeah. You know, looking five years back, um, yeah. looking at him. So, wow. I, uh, yeah, so then I started looking at mortgage. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of just did you feel like it was gonna bring your real estate goals closer to you by becoming a broker? Yeah, I mean, I knew broker? I was I was already going to school for uh, for business finance. Mm -hmm. um, I also my first career was actually a, a firefighter EMT. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know about that one. Yeah, so yeah. I always wanted to help people, and I also wanted to make a good living. Mm -hmm. And so that's somehow intertwined, and now I get to kind of do both yeah. um, through mortgage. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's amazing because I think when my pastor was looking to get his, um, his uh, FHA, I kind of watched through the I was there, like, watching on the side the whole process. Yeah. 
and I it was it was a great joy to see that you helped them through the whole process, and uh, I'm glad that we have people like you that are serving the community. Yeah, yeah. I I would I think mortgage is like the longest. I think it's like right up there. It's like the longest sales transaction that you can ever go through. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not even by the end of it, it doesn't even feel like a sales transaction. Mm -hmm. You know, people are just so relieved that it's over. Mm -hmm. And I've just heard so many horror stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, there is a lot to it. Mm -hmm. And I think people just think of mortgages like you go into a bank and you don't even know why you're put into the loan that you're put into. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're spending forty to $70,000 on your, you know, on your, on your, home transaction mm -hmm. and you don't know if mm -hmm. am i getting a good deal am i not was there something that could have been done differently mm -hmm. so there's a lot to it and wow. i get it yeah wow so do you believe obviously you believe that working with the right person from the beginning oh yeah it's gonna help you a lot yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent and also setting yourself up too um mm -hmm. in the situation because a lot of people think like well if i'm a first-time home buyer that's when I get all the benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I have access to grant assistance. That's when I have the access to the FHA low down payment loan. Mm -hmm. um, but like a real mortgage partner is going to keep tabs on you like an accountant would, right? Mm -hmm. You go see your accountant every year. Mm -hmm. And really in any stage of you buying real estate, you know, whether you're on your second or third home or you're on your second or third investment property, mm -hmm. if you're meeting with your mortgage partner you know, once a year and getting set up for, you know, two or three years out to be in the best possible situation to buy that next place, mm -hmm. then it really doesn't matter what stage you're in in your real estate career. Yeah. You can always be set up to get the best possible benefits. Mm. Wow. That's that's huge. Yeah. For people like me, um, I've bought like the, the home that I live in and I bought a cell of finance. So okay. I'm asking these questions because I still have an opportunity yeah to be able to use my fha uh you know first time home buyers loan right and so people also oftentimes ask me because they see that i'm selling this property or i'm doing this with this property they're like how can i buy my first my first home yeah i'm like well you're asking the right <laughs> guy at the same time the wrong guy yeah. because i am the guy who fix them up buy them fix them up and resell them yeah. I really, you know, the, I know kind of know the process of using your FHA and other loans. Yep. But that's kind of the things I want to talk to you about. And it's going to help me a lot. And it's going to help a lot of our viewers, uh, people that have asked me a lot of questions, people that are following my journey and people yep. that are looking to invest in real estate, starting from uh, an FHA loan. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> wow. So, um, what are some steps that people can take when they're looking to just buy their first home? Mm. They don't know where to get started. What are some ste steps that they can take in terms of credit or the, the right jobs or how long should people be in their job before they even consider like getting into a FHA loan? And what yeah. are the chances of getting approved? So I would say that the first step is, the first step should really be talking to family and friends to finding a referred reputable lender mm -hmm. um, and you want to talk to the lender first before you do anything with credit mm -hmm. um, because either you may not have to do anything at all or the extent of your credit repair uh, may be less than you think mm. um, I've gotten clients a lot of the time where um, it takes them forever to finally apply because they keep saying that oh I, I got to do this with my credit I got to work on my credit and by the time you get them to apply their credit's either not where it still needs to be, mm -hmm. and they've done all this, you know, they've, they've paid tens of thousands of dollars on credit cards, mm. and what they really needed to do was dispute some collections um, mm. and maybe set up a payment plan for a charge off. That would have been half the cost of paying on credit cards. Wow. So one of the benefits um, that I could do is when we get your initial credit report, mm -hmm. If it's not where it needs to be, I can run that through a credit simulator mm -hmm. for free. I don't charge to do this. Okay. A lot of people think to get credit repair, you have to be on some monthly subscription plan, um, especially if you have all these collections mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, I can run that credit report through a simulator free of cost, and we can see 
based on all three bureaus, you have Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, mm -hmm. what exactly you need to do to get to you know, 620, 640, 680. Mm -hmm. We can project that with a simulator. So maybe you, pay, <clears throat> maybe you pay down a little bit on some credit cards. Maybe you remove a collection. Mm -hmm. um, but we can see that and we know for sure that it's going to get you there as opposed mm -hmm. to just randomly throwing money on credit cards and crossing our fingers. Hmm. What, do you th what do you think is the minimum requirement to be the chances of getting approved for an FHA? That's a good question. And whenever I answer that to a client, I always tell them the basics and then I give them my honest opinion. Okay. So I'm going to answer to you like you're my client. Okay. You okay? Are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that uh, to qualify for an FHA loan, mm -hmm. a single family house, you need a 580. Okay. Okay. Bottom line credit score. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking at multi units, you'll need about a 620 to okay. get in there. So mm -hmm. you have more units, a little bit higher risk. Um, but my honest opinion would be that if you're just if you're just scraping by to qualify at a 580 score, your rate's going to be real tough to look at. Okay. Right? Your rate's going to be real tough to look at. And why is it a 580 score? You know, mm -hmm. if you've had some hardship and it's been hard to pay on bills in the future, well, now you're going to be locked into a mortgage payment that's also high because of the rate. Mm -hmm. So maybe now is not a good time to qualify. Maybe we take a few weeks mm -hmm. and we build up that credit score so that way you price better when it comes to your interest rate. Mm -hmm. So I'd want to see really anybody over 620. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I, I think FHA and you're over 640 is really where you want to be. Mm. And 640s, that's a pretty, that's a reachable goal. Mm -hmm. That's a reachable goal yeah. for your average person. Mm. Um, and I say 640 because, um, well, on a, on a grading scale, you're about average for mm -hmm. FHA. Mm -hmm. That's about the average consumer. First time home buyer buying an FHA, they're usually coming in with a 640 mm -hmm. versus someone that may qualify for a conventional loan. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be, that's a whole broad scheme of people that come in. You mm -hmm. know, they may be on their first, second, or third home. So typically the credit score is a little higher. Yeah. Um, so the average credit score for that program may be like 700. Mm -hmm. um, so if you fall below 700, you're not going to get the best pricing there either. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to price on a good scale FHA if you're around 640. Yeah. Um, and you certainly don't have to be somebody that just hasn't owned property ever mm -hmm. um, to okay. qualify for FHA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another misconception. Mm. So what is the benefits of going to, for, with FHA versus any other loans? Like, obviously, there's, there's other loans that are similar to FHA. Yep. Um, what are some benefits of FHA? Is it something that you always need to use when you're buying a home for the first time or could you use other other um other loans that are close to that uh so you absolutely do not need to use fha mm -hmm. um, as your first home buyer loan mm -hmm. and it's definitely not the only option okay. as a first first time home buyer loan mm -hmm. um and whether or not it benefits you is completely up to your own personal circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot to put down on a house, mm -hmm. then FHA makes the most sense. Okay. Um, FHA is minimal down is three and a half percent. Wow. Um, you do have mortgage insurance for the life of the loan if you're putting down under 11%. Mm -hmm. If you put down 11% after 10 years, that mortgage insurance actually will fall off automatically. But mm -hmm. um, Usually people just do three and a half percent down for the FHA loan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, main state housing grant assistance programs will work for FHA, will work with FHA as well, mm -hmm. with no like county restrictions. Okay. So that's good to know as well. Hmm. Um, now, do you want me to just strictly talk about FHA as a no, first you can time? Use other, you can use other things too. Yeah. So um, that being said, um, Again, this is very circumstantial, but let's let's say you're also somebody that still doesn't have a lot to put down, mm -hmm. right? But we're kind of we're kind of at the office, we're talking, mm -hmm. and we kind of look at the overall qualities, the pros and cons of your file. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have a lot to put down, but what are your strengths? Well, you have uh, you have a really good credit score. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an over let's say 680 credit score. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then maybe you qualify for a conventional loan 3% down yeah. for your first home. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That is a benefit that you have as oh, well. Wow. Okay. So as opposed to 5% um, down, which is kind of the standard for someone purchasing a home mm -hmm. um, with conventional, you have the access to a 3% down conventional mortgage. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, um, let's say you also don't make a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you, you're in the lower income based demographic, which for most counties is under 65,000. Okay. Um, I believe for Lewiston and Auburn, it's about that. If you make under mm. like 60, 66,000, 65,000, um, you may actually qualify for a low income based uh, portfolio program okay. where you get better pricing on your rate. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing too. And that's, that's why you want to talk to a lender. Okay. Um, because maybe you have to work on the credit, but not to the extent you need to. And mm -hmm. then also maybe you don't have to bring as much to the closing table mm -hmm. as you thought you needed to. And maybe you're more ready than you thought you were mm -hmm. because you don't have to make a whole lot of money to get the best pricing on a loan. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid, like uh, while I'm getting yeah. this for the first time and I don't know how things are gonna look like. And a lot of the questions that I also get is like, can they use uh, an FHA to buy a multifamily? And is there any of the loans that are close to uh, FHA that can potentially buy them a multifamily up to five units or more? Mm -hmm. Or is there a restriction on using those kind of loans? So typically for an FHA residential loan, if you mm -hmm. want the benefit of the three and a half percent, everything that's advertised with the FHA loan, mm -hmm. that's only good for up to four units. Okay. Once you get over four, now you're dealing with commercial that's an entirely different can of worms. Is that only here in Maine or is that, that yeah, up to four units or is that nationally now? That's nationally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. nationally. Wow. So, um, yeah, so once you get over four, completely different can of worms commercially. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the also things that I get is what is, what is the requirements? Do you need to be an American? Do you need to have a citizenship? Or is that, how does that work? Yeah, so I don't know if there's certain restrictions other places. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I would only work for a place where there was no restrictions on any of that. Yeah. Like, I like, like when I ever got into this business, I wanted to work with everyone with every type of program that there was. I wanted mm -hmm. to feel like I, you know, whenever I could, I could broker a product for a certain situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's no, there's no restrictions on. Um, you could be an uh, an asylum seeker. Which mm -hmm. means you're just here on oh, wow. on work authorization. Yeah, and you can buy, be able to buy and use be able to use that. Correct, and that's like from an immigration standpoint, that's like very beginning stages mm -hmm. of coming to the country, right? Like, yeah. Um, before you even get your green card. Wow. So there's yeah. So as far as this citizenship status, mm -hmm. there's some flexibility there. You do have to have a two year work history, and you do have to have a credit score. Mm. So basically, you got to be able to show that you can pay the mortgage still. So at least two years work history. Correct. Nothing less. Nothing less. Okay. Yeah. So what if you are an investor like myself mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have the typical work history like the other people do? Yeah. How does that go into play? So that's another qualifying aspect that we'd have to look at. Mm -hmm. um, you own an LLC, right? Yeah, a couple of LLCs. A couple of LLCs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would consider you someone that's self-employed. Mm -hmm. and you make your money off investment properties, okay, that's mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have to show a two-year history of you being profitable from doing that. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Now, another thing, too, that I want to add to that mm -hmm. is if you are self-employed, doesn't mean you need to be self-employed for two years. Mm -hmm. If you've been doing what you're doing prior to go going self-employed as a W-2 employee. Mm -hmm. So let's say... Uh, this is common with tradespeople. Mm -hmm. If you were a plumber for you know three, four years, mm -hmm. W two, that's that's what you did full time. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, you go out on your own and you're a full time plumber. Mm -hmm. um, after your first tax return, on your tax return is going to be your profit and loss. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at your profit and loss. If your profit is similar to what you were making as a W two, if not more, mm -hmm. you qualify. Mm. Oh, after wow. one year yeah. yeah okay and that's for that's for anyone that's mm -hmm. for that's for a nurse that would be for you as an investor I think we'd have to get creative with that but if mm -hmm. you were w2 working for like a, a real estate firm mm -hmm. or managing something mm -hmm. relative to real estate that could be a case we make mm-hmm Wow 
That's awesome, man. Uh, I wanted to ask this: What are some of the toughest? What are some of the toughest cases look like? Because um, I witnessed this, you yeah. know, and I think this these days you pull up miracles, and yeah, obviously that's where I, I think like those days are tough. Mm. But also that's where you come in and you make the impossible possible. Uh, what are those? What are some of those challenges, and why do some of those challenges come, especially when it comes to uh, FHA? Because FHA is great, but me and as an investor, mm. when I get a loan that is like, okay, this is gonna be an FHA, it's like ah, you know, like I'm yeah. like, yes, FHA is. I feel like it's great for people who are like buying, mm. but then when it comes to to like um, uh, when it comes to the seller, obviously there's a lot of restrictions and things and yeah. all kinds of things. And even uh, sometimes that may be like for the buyer, something credit, something didn't pay, let's say they didn't pay their car mortgage loan for that, maybe five days before closing, something happens where they yeah. didn't pay that. What, can you talk about some of that? Like some of those challenges that you would, people face and they're not aware about? Yeah. Um, well, let me touch first on the uh, the seller standpoint with an FHA because that's a pain point for me. Yeah, and I'm trying to actually I'm trying to break through that. Like F, there's there's several different types of FHA loans. Okay, a lot of people think an FHA. Oh, it's so it's so layered. It's so restrictive. There's so many things that could go wrong. It's gonna have a strict appraisal. This buyer that's only going FHA probably didn't have any other choices, so they went with FHA, mm -hmm. and they may not know what they're doing and who knows, maybe they'll take out a car loan right before closing. Mm -hmm. So with an FHA loan, um, one of the things I work a lot closely with is um, the FHA 203K okay. renovation loan. Mm -hmm. So if you qualify for an FHA loan, you also qualify for this loan. Okay. It's the same kind of loan, but it makes it so that there's renovations that can be financed in with the loan. Okay. And... Um, I'm not sure why some lenders shy away from this. Mm -hmm. um, and pretty soon, more lenders are going to have to be doing these types of loans, mm -hmm. just given the lack of volume that we have mm -hmm. uh, with housing mm -hmm. and uh, the way that prices are going as well. Uh, mm -hmm. With rates coming down and more people being approved, you're going to have more demand. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're going to have to have you know more construction going on, but that can only happen so quickly. So mm. I think... There's going to be a huge demand for some of these renovation loans, mm -hmm. um, but I always will bring that up too. When someone comes in with an FHA offer and there's potential problems mm -hmm. with the property uh, that may not pass on the FHA appraisal, well, hey, we can always renegotiate then. My buyer may be willing to finance in those repairs to the house. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, maybe we haggle a little bit on the purchase price first, so that makes sense for all parties. Mm -hmm. But that is an option as well with an FHA offer. So at okay. that point, it's actually could become stronger mm. than a conventional loan. Okay. Because now, you know, conventional loan, I mean, there is actually a rehab option for a conventional loan, mm -hmm. but let's say that maybe that conventional buyer is not interested in doing a rehab, mm. whereas someone with an FHA may. Okay. That's a lot of questions that sometimes listing agents don't ask mm. when they have a property that may not pass the FHA appraisal. It's like, yeah. what kind of work are we talking? Mm. So, just wanted to get that out of the way. Okay. Actually, that opened up my eyes a lot. <laughs> it's like, yes, I kind of knew a little bit about that. But then we've had, now and then we had struggle. And then the FHA loans that have gone just smooth without any problems. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, to touch back on your kind of the basis of your question, which was some of the challenges that I see and why do those develop? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those. So there's like one case where um, you just have a borrower that for X, Y and Z reasons, they're just not good at turning documents in mm -hmm. in a timely manner. Um, and maybe we can qualify you based on. Um, your pay stubs and your W-2s and mm -hmm. your credit score, right? That means that based on what you earn and based on your credit, mm -hmm. you can pay the mortgage on this FHA loan. 
this mm -hmm. FHA loan program. Mm -hmm. So you are qualified from that aspect. Mm -hmm. But do we have the full picture? Well, maybe we're still waiting on your tax returns from two weeks ago that we asked you to, to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you just don't think it's a big deal, but on the tax returns for an FHA loan, if you wrote off a ton of money mm -hmm. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, let's say your tax accountant uh, put a you know, $30,000 loss on a Schedule C business. Mm -hmm. So what, th what does that mean? That means that you just showed that you have a business right now that's a $30,000 liability. And we have to now count that again against your income. Oh, wow. So if we don't want to count that against your income, then we need to come up now with a case that shows that business is discontinued. Wow. So that, that, that's a whole lot of hurdles to jump through, and that could actually be something that we, wow. we solution with mm -hmm. and solve mm. had it been brought to our attention a few weeks ago. Mm. But if that's something that's caught in the middle of being under contract, now we're just cutting it way too close. We're probably going to miss our closing date. And mm. now I'm going to the underwriter last minute trying to preach a case on this whole situation mm -hmm. that just doesn't look good. And it never looks good when you're going to an underwriter last minute for mm. something like that. So, so you're like the lawyer fighting on behalf. Exactly. And trying to defend and say and the why. Way, right. And the way that I always look at it is... I should have to go to the underwriter as few as few times as possible. Every time I go to the underwriter, I should have everything I need, and it should be check, 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 check. Mm -hmm. If I have to go to the underwriter more than like three times in a transaction, it looks a little weird, right? Mm -hmm. If I go there four times, five times, now something's up, right? It's like, yeah. okay, why does this? Why does Jake have to keep coming back to me with all these questions mm -hmm. on this file? Mm -hmm. Why is there so many exceptions that need to be made? Mm -hmm. um, so the biggest, the biggest thing is get your documents in in, in a timely fashion. Um, that would be the biggest thing I would, I I would, would want to go over. Mm -hmm. And really, that's not where a lot of my challenges come from mm -hmm. um, because I'm very adamant with what I need. I actually send out an initial email that asks for all of the income documents mm -hmm. that I need up front mm -hmm. that could potentially show something that would be problematic that we could solution on now and try to get ahead of before you actually go under contract. Mm. Most of my challenges um, are actually good challenges, and this is just because this is part of career development, mm -hmm. is I like the big problem files. Mm -hmm. I like to do the 203Ks okay. with the contractors and mm. the, the consultants and getting the listing agent on the phone and talking about deadlines and mm. maybe we got to rope in an engineer and talk mm. about fixing up the foundation. Like, that type of stuff is fun to me, and those are some of my biggest challenges right now. Mm. Wow, man. You are like, you are an investor friendly. I'm a huge investor friendly, yeah, yeah. Broker yeah. who's doing amazing things, all that is also helping just normal people who are looking to just buy their home for the first time, or they are looking to just, or sometimes not even the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I know we focus a lot on first-time home buyers and FHA and some other loans, but I know that you also land, you also broker for a lot of different kind of loans. And yeah. so uh, I'm glad that we can talk about this. I know there's so much more that you can deliver. Uh, I want just I wanted to make sure that people just not only see you as as a FHA, FHA broker. So. Yeah. This is somebody that can be able to work with you in a lot of different areas of uh, when you're looking to buy a home. Uh, or also the investors also uh, that are looking for different kind of loan types. And so I'm glad that you actually came. Of course, man. So I want to ask you the biggest question is that where can people find you and you know how can they connect with you? Um, and so maybe you can just, you know, kind of elaborate on that. Yeah. So, um, I'm a big people person. You can add me on Facebook. You can mm -hmm. add me on social media. I'm not hard to find. I'm all over the place. Yeah. Um, if you want to call me or text me, my number is 207-325-1217. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm all over the place and I'm based right in South Portland Yeah. and I invite people to stop in whenever. Awesome. Awesome. Jake is the kind of guy that actually goes into the closings with you. <laughs> and uh, I've seen a lot in his Facebook posts. And 
it's great. Thank you so much for serving our community. Yeah. And I'm glad that um, I'm glad that we did this today because I, I, you answered a lot of questions that I have yeah. and a lot of questions that my viewers have. And so thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to actually doing another podcast with you at some point. Yeah, Maybe more to. in investing side because I know you're also doing some investing. That's why I call him a investor friendly uh, broker. So yeah. I'm excited. Uh, your journey, I know some of them you sh didn't share, but you're also doing some investing as well. And some of the, your goals are also on that side. So, yeah. But I'm happy and I'm glad that you came, man. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you.